for sharing uh, in the chat. Keep it coming. I want to hear all of you. I want to see all of you uh, comment. And I will want you to participate throughout the presentation. So feel free to share. Um, everything is obviously stays here uh, between all of us. And uh, I will be asking you questions. We'll have some trivia. And I want to hear what you think. And I feel like the more engaged you are with the content and with the conversation, the more you're going to take away. So feel free to engage, enjoy the process and take notes because all of this is really, really valuable. I, I have seen how much this has helped a lot of my students, and I know that it will be so for you as well. So becoming an effective decision maker. Uh, before I continue, I just want to introduce myself very quickly. Before I tell you about all the tools and techniques, I just want to share my, for those of you who haven't seen me before, my um, career started as a marketing professional, actually working with Maddie, Melissa, Samantha back in the day. And then I turned into, I, I turned my career around and became a coach and a speaker. And today I train people to elevate their mindset and their skill set so they can live fulfilling lives. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do it through mastermind groups in corporate trainings like this one, events, virtual, and in person. And I just really love being able to see my students and my clients grow and just really maximize their potential day by day. And to me, it is a privilege to do this work. And I've been doing this for over seven years. It's going to be 10 years. Um, I think in May, it's going to be 10 years. So it's it's a lot and it's been a beautiful journey. I love serving, and so if you feel like you have questions about what we were talking about today, if you need more resources, I'm here to help. Feel free to reach out. You can see my information here, my email, uh, resources like a free course, a quiz that I offer through the Woman School and the Wholeness School, and my Instagram is also a place where we can get to know each other a little better, and so I'm here to serve. Let's start. And um, who can, um, have you ever thought, you know, have you ever really sat down and, and considered how many decisions you make a day? So there's 35,000 decisions that the average person makes a day. How much is that per year? Guess. Like if, you, if you're good at math, you'll come up with this number. I, I, had to, I had to calculate it with a calculator because it's hard. 12 million, almost 13 million decisions we make almost 13 million decisions a year, okay? So for someone, if we multiply that by 60, you know, you can estimate about 720 million decisions by the time you're 60 years old. So decisions definitely shape our lives and we are making them all the time. And before we go into decision-making, I just want to say, you know, sometimes indecision is equal to making a decision, right? Like when we don't make a decision, when we're indecisive, a lot of people come to me and they say, Nia, I'm really bad at making decisions. Especially women in general, they, they come to me and they say, Nia, I'm really, really bad at making decisions and I'm very indecisive. But making being indecisive and not making a decision is also a choice. We are choosing to stay the same. And so I want you to be aware of this. This is something that stro uh, struck me very deep when I heard it. And, and sometimes we feel like we, when we live in indecisive land, in decision land, uh, we are just safe, but we are making a decision uh, regardless. So it's very important for us to know that and be aware. And um, I want you to give me a one in the chat if you feel like you want to improve this skill. Obviously, if you're here, I'm sure you're wanting to, but I want you to kind of share with me a one if you feel like you want to commit to being a better decision maker and a more effective decision maker. Uh, and I'll give you reasons as to why this is so powerful and so important. And I'm going to give you also practical tools that you can take away. Uh, so you don't just leave with fun information and exciting, you know, new, new data, but you leave with a practical step-by-step -step process that you can follow to actually use this in, in improving this skill, because it is a skill, right? We can always learn new skills and our brains are amazing. So 511 million decisions are made by the time we're 40 years old. The average 40 year old would have made that amount. And so right now your current present moment is composed of the millions of pixels of decisions compounding together over time to present your current results. Our results are a um, direct outcome of our decisions. And so ex the external circumstances that we're living, uh, some we cannot control. But in reality, the decisions we make and, and the only thing we can control is how we respond 
to the external world, right? That is the biggest, I think, area of control that we have, our response, right? And that's where we make the decisions um, based on what's happening on the outside. And obviously the skill is not only helpful for making decisions on the outside, but also in management of emotions, management of the mind and regulating our nervous system, like making decisions applies to everything. So as soon as you start applying this, you're gonna see how powerful it is and how much it helps you in every area. So whether you choose to admit it or not, your decisions have a compounding impact in your current state of life. The decisions that I've made, the decisions that you've made have brought you to where you are, right? So my question to you is, do you feel fulfilled? And if the answer is no, let's work on this skill. Let's learn about this. So because the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of your decisions. Therefore, you can't really afford to continue to make decisions uh, that are ineffective. We have to get serious about this. And the problem is that you do not have a built-in infrastructure to know how to do that. No one taught us how to make decisions. So maybe you had a role model, your, your, your parents, whoever raised you, and you copied some patterns from the people you've seen, maybe a boss, a mentor, uh, a friend, a peer that maybe was very good at making decisions. And you kind of modeled after that. But in reality, where do we learn to make decisions? Nowhere. I mean, unless you go and take a decision-making course, we, we, it's not thought in schools. It's not thought in college. So Today, I want to give you uh, these three key points that are going to help you make decisions in a better way so that you can walk away with um, more confidence around this area so that you can be more effective and also pass it down to the next generation if you have little ones at home or big, you know, already grown children as well. So first thing we're going to talk about is why you should develop a strong decision making uh, skills three main blocks to making effective decisions and the formula to master your decision-making skills, which is really helpful and very clear that you, and you can really follow it very quickly and easily, but it does take time to wire. Of course, everything I teach you today, take it with a grain of salt. You know, we do, we are students for life. And although I'm going to give you a formula, it takes time to apply it so that you can start feeling more comfortable with um, using it to your advantage. Okay. So, the will to do it. I remember a story that really stroked me about decision making, and I think it might be also fun for you to hear. And it was President Kennedy when he made the decision to ask uh, the president of NASA at the time uh, what what it would take to put a man in the moon and return him safely to Earth before the end of the decade uh, when he was president. And the president at the time of NASA, uh, it was his name is uh, Warner Von Braun told President Kennedy, what it would take is the will to do it. The will to do it. And that day, Kennedy decided that he was going to do it. The fact that it had never been done before in all the hundreds of thousands of years of human history was not a consideration for him. He decided where he was, um, that he was going to do it with the resources they had. And so the objective was accomplished. They made it. And as we all know, it's history. It happened. It was done. But in reality, the reason why we achieved that is because we had the will to do it. The, the government, the scientists, the teams were dedicated and they, they worked with what they had. They made a decision, they committed, and the how was figure, figured out after, in, uh, during the journey and as, in just following the process of, you know, how do we do this? How do we put the resources together? But before you ever make a decision, you want to have the commitment uh, of just really pursuing that outcome and that thing that you're looking for first, right? A lot of people wait for the right circumstances to be to be set, to be perfect, and then they make a decision. But most of the time, when you want something, you will make it happen. And this applies to every type of decision. So what are the benefits of effective decision making? Well, indecisive, indecisiveness causes missed opportunities. So making effective decisions is actually beneficial because a lot of the energy and the time that we waste when we're just wrestling and thinking, what should I do? What should I not do? It's just wasted re our wasted resources that we don't really, we can't really afford to, to waste, right? And so um, also lack of decision uh, causes stress. All this stress that it generates makes you feel like, in, like you're in limbo, you're stagnated, you're stuck. Really, we cannot really contribute. We can't really 
be our best selves when we're in this state of uh, stress and stagnation. So it's important to make decisions. Fear is usually the cause of indecision, fear of losing something. Um, but honestly, I think that once we start changing the, the narrative about what failure really is, we start being more aggressive in our decisions because we realize, hey, you know, failure is, is a way to learn. And that humility of knowing that failure takes us, uh, helps us grow and that there are really no failures, just wins or you either win or you learn allows you to just be more, a little braver, a little more brave in, in just jumping in and thinking about, okay, if I make a decision now, let me focus on what I can get, what I can gain instead of what I could lose. And if I lose, I learn, right? We either win or we learn. So we also have to be free to fail in our decisions, just like I said, because if we are not, then we're we're really gonna be people who get stuck in a decision all the time because we're afraid of the outcome, like I like I just said. And it's also, um, like I said, not it's not a bad, bad decision if you learn, if you gain something from it, if you gain wisdom and lessons, and if you're okay with being wrong and really uh, have that humility to grow. And then the number one trait of leaders is actually in successful people and happy people ultimately is that they're firm in their decisions. They're quick to make decisions and they're slow to change them. Write this down. So quick, uh, effective decision makers, happy people, leaders, successful people are people who they make decisions quickly and they change them slowly. People who are not successful, unhappy people tend to actually make decisions very slowly and then change them quickly. So we want to make quick decisions and change them slowly, figure it out um, to be successful and, and just learn from things, you know? So what keeps people from being effective decision makers? Let's talk about this a little bit. So it's not really, no one teaches us in schools, universities or colleges how to make decisions. Most people learn from their parents and or older authority figures, like I said earlier, who perhaps never mastered the skills because they didn't have the training. Uh, fear of failure, decision makers are not afraid of, of just making a decision and making an error, making a mistake because they learn and they just keep going. But most people are afraid of failure. That's why we have to switch the narrative around failure. Um, others' opinions, circumstances, there's all, uh, um, you know, factors that keep us uh, stuck from making a decision and away from making the decisions that we need to make for everyday life. So one of the stumbling blocks that I want to spend some time in is circumstance. Circumstance is really the reality that you're in right now, right? A lot of us, you know, when we are going to make a decision, we say, you know, what, what, what does my reality look like? Let's make an inventory of what I have, the resources that I count with, and let's uh, see what, what the decision will be based on that. So how often, I want to ask you this question, have you caught yourself saying, I would like to do or have this or that, but I can't because. How many times? Give me a two in the chat if this has happened to you very often where you really want something. It could be material, it could be anything, but you say, I can't because. And I do see some people sharing in the chat too, too. Yes, and so whether, uh, whatever follows because is a circumstance. So anytime you're saying, I, I want to, I want to have this, I want to do this, but I can't because money, time, resources, support, whatever it is, that is circumstance. So circumstances will cause you to detour in your life, but you should never permit them to stop you from making important decisions. So sometimes you can say, you know, maybe I have to save some money to get there. Maybe I have to go back to school. Maybe I have to wait a little bit. Maybe I have to put in some extra work to get this thing that I want or to commit to this decision, but never permit circumstance from, for, for um, um, never allow it to just deter you from the purpose that you have, the dream that you have and the things that you really want to accomplish. Okay. So you have the ultimate decision. You either let circumstance define you or you create the circumstances. And there's a quote by Napoleon uh, that says, circumstances, I make them. And what a beautiful way to think, you know, if things are not the way you want them to be, why not create them? Why not make the circumstances? Why not mold your reality to make things happen, right? We can do that sometimes, but it does, it does take work. So 
I want to ask you a quick question. Who wants to who wants to do trivia? Who wants to play trivia right now? Uh, so my question to you is going to be very simple, and I want you to answer. Oh, I'm going back. Let me go back. So imagine, and we're just going to work on this as an exercise for you to kind of internalize this concept of circumstance. And this is my husband and I, these are my husband and I in Paris. We had a fun trip and took some pictures. So I wanted to show you this. So let's pretend, I'm sure not everyone wants to go to Paris, but let's pretend that you're traveling to Paris and you are wanting to go. You've been dreaming about it. It could be Bora Bora. It could be whatever you want, wherever you want to go. You can share in the chat a place you've always dreamt of going. And this will help you even more because if you know where, what to use it for, it could really be helpful. So let's say you want to travel to Paris, wherever. Just tell me where you would like to travel to right now in the chat. A place that you've always wanted to, but you probably haven't made the decision yet. Um, and it could be travel. It could also be something else. Just apply it to whatever is best right now in this season of your life. And so my question to, is, to you is, naturally, let me see the chat. I'm curious to see where you all want to go. Egypt, Spain. Oh, Spain, Spain is awesome. Spain, what else? Where else would you all want to go? Switzerland, Africa. Th those are fun places. I love it. So imagine you've always wanted to go to Japan. Japan is cool. I want to go to Japan as well. Italy, me too. So exciting. And so imagine you've always wanted to go to that place that you just listed. What is your usual response? And this applies to anything. So I want you to just think about this and give a quick answer. Don't overthink it. Most people fall in two categories, right? So what would be your usual response when, when you think, oh, I really want to go to Egypt. I really would love to go to Switzerland, Africa. Option one, so you're going to type a one in the chat if this is you, if this would be your response. And you're going to type a two in the chat in the second option. So the first option is, what is your response to go and say, do you make a decision to say, I'm going? and then figure it out. Are you that type of person that says, I'm going, tells your friends, your family, we're going to Egypt, we're going to Africa. And then you try to figure out the pricing and you make a budget and you figure it out, look at the tickets. Or are you uh, more like option two, uh, where you say, well, I will wait until I have the money to allow myself to do it. Like, do you, what, do you wait until you have the money to allow yourself to even think about it? Or maybe you say, I don't have the money right now. I don't have the time. And I and you you write number two. And of course, this doesn't only apply to travel. It applies to everything. But identify yourself in this one or two. Wait for the money. Then Depends on the mood. <laughs> if, you're, if you're feeling adventurous, if you're feeling brave, you just go and buy the tickets and then figure it out. So I see some ones. I don't see some twos. I know maybe for some of you, you don't want to share. I do see another two. Um, and it's okay, you know, there's no shame and, and nothing uh, that we're going to focus on that's negative today. However, I want to say that the, the how is usually revealed to you after you make the decision. A lot of us think that we have to know the how before we step into the decision. But when you commit to something like Kennedy did when he wanted to take the United States of America uh, to the moon first before the end of the decade when you make a decision you will find a way it's like when you love you fall in love and, and you love you know you're in that early stage of falling in love and you want to see that person and you you figure it out and you find a way to just see them and meet them for lunch and see them all the time it's because you have that will that willingness that energy that seal that moves you because you've made the decision that that is important to you so every time you're going to make a decision first you commit to it and then the how is revealed you say, I want to pursue a new career. I want to uh, I'll go after this dream of moving to this place. Well, don't wait for circumstances to align. Don't wait for the money to appear to make that trip. You say, I'm going to go to this place this year, this month with this person, and then start planning. This happened to one of my clients. She had dreamt about going to with her family to Colombia or something like that. And her kids were older. She was having a hard time getting them together. And she had always wanted to just kind of have family trips every year. But it was hard for the family until she made the decision. And she figured it out. She arranged everything. And she was able to get all her kids to travel with, with their dad and her and her dad. And for her, it became a tradition. 
over the years because she made the decision. But before she had made the decision, she would just think about, oh no, the kids are busy. One of them is in the army. It's not going to work out. I don't know how much the tickets cost. You do the homework and the how will show. You make the decision and the how will be revealed. So how many of you feel that that gives you a little bit of hope to know that, to know that decisions come first in the circumstance um, are created by you once you're committed. Um, let me know in the chat if that is helpful. So the other the other block is fear of failure, right? We talked about circumstance, which was one of the biggest blocks to decision making. Now, the other block is um, the fact that people don't want to fail. We don't want to fail. We want to see seem as successful. And the, technically, the school system has raised us and created, created a, a culture of, you know, getting an F is really bad. You don't want to fail. But in reality, when you look at, at life and taking risks, there, life is full of failure. And if you think about Babe Ruth, he hit 714 home runs. And most people don't think about the fact that he stroke out, stroke out 1,313 times. So baseball, I would say most sports, especially I know a lot about baseball because my husband used to play, my brothers play baseball at, at a college level, professional level. So it's a game of failures. It is. And a lot of us don't realize how much failure we have to face or people have to face to be great. And and that's why we just kind of repel. We go against um, anything that will seem like a, pos a possible failure. And so just think about it. Like he had to strike out a thousand and three hundred a thousand three hundred and thirty times to get seven hundred from 14 home runs. The average baseball player, you know, the average a good average for a baseball player is three hundred and something um in and out of a thousand so they definitely fail 70 percent of the time because the average is 300 it would be like they're hitting the ball 30 percent of the time and missing it 70 percent of the time so most people who are great have a lot of failure that they stand on and sometimes all we see is the success and we don't realize there's a lot of failure behind decision making there's a lot of um missed opportunities when we don't make decisions and that this is part of life and part of growth. And so when we don't make decisions because of that, we don't allow ourselves to grow in wisdom. We don't allow ourselves to grow in experience because we're just so afraid of failure. So I hope this is helping. And so, you know, what I would say, the biggest tip that I've uh, ever, you know, learned from the woman's school and, and the trainings we do is decide with what you have, um, and where you are, just make a decision and then figure it out. It's important to just say, you know, this is what I have. I'm going to do the best with what I have and where I am right now. And we'll see what happens. That's the biggest tip I could give you uh, in, a, in, re in regards to failure and embrace failure as part of life. And so another uh, recommendation and another way of looking at decision making that really changes the game for a lot of my students is advanced decision making. And I always tell, tell my, my coaching clients and my students, you know, you want to make decisions in advance to save you from ambivalence, right? So let's say a good example is when, we, when we're trying to eat healthy, it's so much easier to make the decision of, hey, this is the menu for the week. These are the, I'm going to meal prep. I'm going to have my decision made, my meals prepped for the week. And this is what I'm going to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Once you make that decision, once you're faced with like, oh, let's go out to eat, guys, because your company, your your coworkers are going out to lunch or or temptation or something like that when you're trying to eat healthy, you have already made the decision and that makes it easier for you to not be in that spot where you're like, what do I do and be on the fence and just kind of make the wrong choices? Same thing when you go out on a date, you decide, you know, this is just going to be a date. This is just going to be to get to know this person. Or when you go um, uh, to any situation, you want to go and really make a decision in advance of who you're going to be, what conversations you're going to engage with. This is another one. A lot of times we engage in conversations at work or with friends that perhaps are not good for us. Gossip and all these different things, judging others. But if you make the decision, hey, I'm not going to engage in those conversations because that's not who I want to be anymore. You just basically, you made the decision in advance. And when people start just engaging in those like gossiping and, and judging others, you walk away because you have made the decision that you won't engage. And same thing with your kids. If you have little kids or big kids, you know, I won't yell. I won't, you know, this is what I will do in this case. That really helps. And so uh, you when you choose what your day will be like, that's a powerful one. When you wake up and you say, this is going to be a good day. 
I'm going to make it a good day. No matter what comes my way, I choose to have a good day. You choose your attitude. You choose how you show up. All of that is a way to be proactive uh, when you make that decision on all these areas of life instead of reactive and letting your environment dictate how you will feel. And so in general, decision-making is a skill that will change every area of your life. Remember, we're, we're, uh, hum we're beings that are integrated. A lot of times we like to separate family life from our health. No, if I take care of my health, I can't really work on my finances and in my fin finances won't affect my friendships. Totally, totally off. That's totally off uh, out of, you know, after working with thousands of people, we've found, we've found that our friendships impact our wealth, right? Like my capacity to choose the right friends will impact my capacity to grow wealth, invest, save, make more money. Mm, your capacity to have a harmonious, peaceful life in your uh, family life will impact the environment you live in, will impact the, the your health and vice versa. We're always... We're integrated beings, and that's why um, in the wholeness school, in the woman's school, we are very big on integrating every part of your life. And once you improve this skill, the decision-making skill, every area of your life will see an improvement because everything's connected, right? We can't separate our, our the areas of our life. And so I have a quiz that you can take. I will share uh, at the end so that you can rate how every area of your life is how how happy you are, how uh, whole you feel in every area, and then start seeing how after the assessment, how this training today is impacting every area. And I see it all the time with my clients. Once they um, work on their self image and they start having a better, you know, positive dialogue, more confidence, their intimacy improves, right? Because with their partners, they feel better. Uh, their family relationships feel better. Their kids start modeling after, you know, when they work on their self-image and they reprogram the habits that are are not helping them in the, in the image of themselves and the belief that just no longer serve them. It affects their wealth, their home. They want to, they, they suddenly, a lot of my students, they suddenly want just, they want to reorganize their houses, declutter, uh, I don't know, get a new job, move into a new place. Like, because when you're, when you um, upgrade one of these, all of the other ones start to just really shift. So decision making is one skill that can help every area. And is only decision making is one skill out of over 50 skills that we teach in the women's school. And it's one of the, I think, foundational ones that everyone should have and master if they want to live a happy life because we're always making decisions. So here is the skill formula. How many of you want to learn this formula to kind of plug in what I'm teaching today and just take it with you for everyday life. If you want to take a picture of it or screenshot it, feel free to do that um, so that you can kind of see what I'm teaching. Usually the first time people go over this, it's just a time to become aware of what is possible with this formula. And then as they practice it over and over to my students, I always say, you know, you want to memorize this skill formula and you want to use it for any skill. You know, we teach skills like gratitude, resilience, um, uh, joy, how to be a more joyful person. And then those are like foundational skills. Then we have the more advanced skills, like optimal skills that are more uh, related to planning, decision-making, which this is one of them. And, um, and more technical functional skills that are marketing sales and other, other things like that speaking. And so the first step in this formula is awareness. First, you have to come to the awareness and say, I want, where am I in this moment from a one through 10? I'm seeing that I'm at a, probably a six or a seven when it comes to being an effective decision maker, right? We can rate your, we can rate you. And we say, okay, I'm becoming aware. You reveal the path towards a new possibility. You say, right now, I need to kind of improve my decision making skills because I'm taking too long or I'm feeling stuck in my decisions too often, or maybe I'm making decisions quickly, but they're not the best decisions. So let me become aware of where I am and then just see a possibility of something different, okay? So you're like, oh, I need to work on this. You figure it out. And then you say, you assess, which is, these two are very similar. You become aware and you assess. What's my starting point? Well, I'm at a seven right now. Where do I wanna be? I wanna be at a 10 where I feel like I can make decisions be okay with the outcome. If I make a mistake, I fix it, I solve it, but I don't stay stuck in a decision. 
and where you're making the, the best decisions possible, knowing that you will make mistakes sometimes, okay? You won't be perfect. Um, and then you develop a vision. You say, you know, I want to make decisions quickly and change them slowly. That's the goal. And not spend too much time maybe choosing my, my clothes, choosing the things that I need for the project at work or choosing the menu for, for the house or choosing, you know, the next, the next, um, just don't, anything that has to do with work as well. Any, any, anything that is just important that maybe you're spending too much time in wasting too much energy in, you want to create a vision to get away from that and closer to a more effective path. Okay. So actions, then you choose the actions. What's the strategy that's going to help you get there. And then you choose who is going to hold you accountable to walk with you in that journey of improving these skills. So let's jump a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper into the, um, the uh, step number one, which is awareness. So awareness is a decision, um, knowing that a decision is a commitment, right? That we are a lot of the times a, a, a world that is afraid of making commitments. You can see it in the dating world. People don't want to commit. People don't want to choose. They just want to, you know, test different things in, in, in society, right? So because we are afraid of commitment, we don't understand the value of time and talent and we squander our time. We squander our energy because we're not able to make decisions, we're afraid of commitment. So a decision is a commitment to something. A decision is also required in order to create a beautiful life. Because if I don't decide, the world will decide for me. If you don't decide quickly, other people will shape the way your life works and looks and the, and the things that will happen. I tell my kids, this is something I learned from our founder, January. And I love it. Since I learned it, I always tell my kids, if you don't make a choice in the next 10 seconds, I will make it for you. You either choose your clothes or I will choose it for you because that's how the world works. And we have to prepare these kids for the world, the real world. If they're not able to make a decision, other people will make it for them. Same thing have, applies to us. So, the, you know, without a decision, we're wasting time and talent. Our decision is often uh, a risk towards the unknown and, and we crave certainty right? Humans, we need to have a good balance of certainty and variety. Those are the human needs, uh, two human needs. So we want some certainty, but not too much that we get bored. And we want some variety, but not too much that we don't feel stable. So sometimes making a decision might be a jump into the, a jump into the unknown. And that's why we resist it. This is why faith is so important. And if we knew the outcome, right? If we have faith in the outcome, um, if we had, basically, if someone revealed what's going to happen to us when we make a big decision, it would be so boring, right? There would be no purpose. Uh, we would need no courage to really go after the thing. So we require faith. Making big decisions, going after big dreams, big projects, big moves requires faith. And that's what allows us to hang on to, to our creator and to just go into the unknown and just be there through faith. So controlling our reaction uh, is the most important part. It doesn't matter what happens. What matters is how you react. And so in a world that is moving fast, we cannot afford to waste time in indecision, really. And if we do waste time in indecision, we'll, we're going to grow into resentment because we will go uh, and we'll be, we'll just, you know, time will go by. We'll be 80 years old, 90 years old, and we'll look back and say, why I wish I had done this. I wish I had made that decision to go to that place. I wish I had in that resentment really eats us away, right? And so let's assess very quickly. This is a step two in the skill formula. We teach over 50 skills and skills, and this is one of them. And the way we assess is we ask you questions. So I want you to write in your paper one through seven and um, just yes or no next to the number. And if you want to take a picture of this, you can as well. So let's assess your, your decision-making skills right now. So please do this without judgment, without shame. Just do it because you, you know, you want to really know where you are and, and as a path to, to growth and learning. So number one is, are you quick to make decisions and not procrastinate? Yes or no? Number two, are you in fear of failure, which is costing you indecision in any area of your life? Yes or no? Number three, are you aware of what your decision 
your indecision is costing you, I want you to think about this. What is it costing you to stay the same? Is there an area of your life that you need to work on? And I always say this to my students and my clients. What's the consequence of staying the same? Regret, pain, because there's pain in changing and there's pain in staying the same. Which pain do you choose, right? So important. I always say that to them, you know. Uh, four, are you personally developing your mind in order to make thoughtful uh, choices? Are you growing every year? I always, you know, say, well, you want to become a student every day, study something. Uh, that's what I always say, you know, girls, ladies, let's study 15 minutes a day. It doesn't matter. But become a student, fill your mind with information, with knowledge, apply it. That will make you a better decision maker. Okay. Number five, do you give yourself options in making a decision? This is a huge one. Sometimes we make decisions and we don't really look at all the options. We think it's either black or white, this option one or two, but maybe there are more. This is one thing that I will, I'll teach you later on. Um, number six, are you surrounded with friends that do not decide? Because, right, we, we follow a lot of the habits and patterns of behavior that our friends have. Number seven, are you, after you make a decision, do you take massive action? Sometimes I have to work on this one. Uh, for me, I make decisions. I take a few. I'm the one that will take action right after, but then it like slow, it dies off. So I always need someone to hold me accountable in following through. I'm really good at starting things, but I need someone to hold me accountable in the follow through. Some people, maybe you are this way, like me, or some people are really good, take a, a long time to start, but when they start, they finish and they follow through. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm the opposite. So tell, think about that as well. So this is an assessment. Now, now that we have assessed where you are, let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Uh, if you've gone through your yes and no, keep that with you. That's a starting point. Now we start working on creating a vision, right? Because what the mind sees, the mind achieves. And you want to just create a vision of, hey, what is it that... Um, I want to be like, how do I want to be when it comes to decision making? What is it? What's the self image that I want to program and wire in this area? So I'm decisive. I'm quick to learn from my failure. You can take any of these. I give myself freedom to make mistakes and not allow it to consume me. I am committed. Um, just choose one and take it with you as a kind of like a, a script that you can use to rewire and just think about, you know, when it comes to decision making in this key area of my life, I want to be able to make decisions quicker, don't waste so much time and just visualize yourself being able to achieve that. And so as you visualize, then your brain will give you different ideas on how to achieve it. So the vision is that, you know, I want to just say yes, make a decision and follow through. For me, I would say the vision that I would set is I'm decisive and I follow through. That's my biggest one. You know, I make a decision and I follow through. And and that's where I want to work on right now. And then you can write down this vision and what it looks like for you in your daily life. Is it at work? Is it with your family members? Is it with your kids? Uh, sometimes I found that um, maybe I tell my kids, oh, we're going to go there. And I make the decision to say something when I haven't really decided fully and then I have to change it on my kids. And it really creates a lot of um, like a lack of integrity for them. So, and I have to just kind of be smarter about what I say and the decisions I make so that they don't think I'm just always changing things on them. You know, that's important at work as well, you know, make a decision and stick with it. Don't switch it up, uh, finish your projects, whatever it is that you are wanting, write it down, just a descriptive uh, paragraph, short paragraph of how you see yourself so that we can start working on this. Let me know if this is making sense before we go on, if this is helping you, if you're able to just create a clear vision. If you're not, you can also um, just message me and I can help you walk through this in a in an individual manner. We can just meet up. I usually do like free strategy sessions and we can walk through this and then I can show you um, how to do it if it's if it's not uh, something that you feel comfortable with so okay all right so I gave you some time to do that and now I'm trying to um, move to the next one so action 
right? Part of the formula, the skill formula, you see it here, is action. You know, you have the vision, you know how you want to be when it comes to decision making. Now you have to choose your strategy. Without a strategy, without a plan, we won't make it, right? And so practice giving yourself maybe three options every time. So that could be your go-to strategy. Every time you face a decision, you say, what are my three options? A lot of times we don't realize we have more options than just black or white, these or that. There are other options. So just explore your options, give yourself three options, narrow down the choices, and then make a decision. Another strategy is identifying uh, what your decision will give you. Because a lot of times when we're gonna make a decision, how many of you do this? And I, I can say that I, this is something I need to work on. We, we focus on what we will lose. Oh, what if I go and you know invest in this thing? I'm gonna, I might lose $1,000, $3,000, $500, $100,000 if I invest in this. What about shifting your mind to be more positive and saying, what will I gain? Oh, if I don't gain the return on investment that I wanted, or I don't gain the things that I wanted, then I could gain experience. And I gain that sense of, I do what I say I will do. I back up my talk. I walk my walk, my talk, right? So that is also something that we can do, focus on what we will gain instead of what we will lose. Because we tend to think about what we will lose more often. Number three, study successful decision-making. Decision makers read stories of successful people that have done, made decisions and failed and won and, you know, learn from them. Uh, maybe a coworker, a mentor in, in your space that you can learn from, a uh, spouse. I, I have learned a lot from my husband. He's a very good decision maker. Number four, give yourself permission to fail. Again, just say, you know, I'm going to make a decision. It's okay if it doesn't go the way I planned. I'll learn from it, but I will make a decision. I guarantee you'll feel better about making it than staying the same and wondering what would have happened if, you know, what if I had done it? And then number five is think about what would this mean in one year? What would this mean in three years? Would this really matter in five years? Would this really be such a big deal in one year, three years, five? A lot of times putting things in perspective really helps you move forward. So I want you to decide right now which one of these will be your go-to strategy and just type the number in the chat. I love holding people accountable. This is how I get my clients to get results. This is how we see women really moving forward, accountability. So I'm holding you accountable here to choose which one of these you think will be the most helpful. Uh, remember, you can choose now and then change it later, but choose one, say, and the next time I need to make a decision, I'm going to just focus on strategy one that Nia shared with me. I'm going to focus on that. And that's going to be your go-to, your go-to strategy. Number four, Tina said number four. Okay, give yourself permission to fail. Good one. That's a good one. Uh, I want to see more. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to share, show me more. I want to I wanna make sure you walk away with some strategy. Otherwise, this is just consuming information, right? And information does not equal transformation if we don't include the application. So information plus application equals transformation. When we consume information and we don't apply it, we just don't change. So let's let's apply this as much as we can. And if you have any questions, I'm here to help. So the last part of this formula, which I think is brilliant, uh, is who is going to hold me accountable? Who is going to hold me accountable? Who is going to be that person, that peer, that mentor, that coach, that's whoever the strategist, that person who is going to remind me, oh, remember you said that next time you made a decision, you were going to embrace failure, Tina, right? You were going to try to give yourself options. Uh, you were going to, what's the other one that Colleen said? Identify what your decision will give you instead of what it will take away. So that person is going to be your go-to uh, friend because when we don't have accountability, it's so easy to just retrieve retreat and and just go back to the old patterns and the old habits like when you have a trainer at the gym and you hire a trainer don't you show up on time don't you just value it more because you're investing money you are paying you're putting skin in the game same thing happens when you have accountability that's why coaching is such a huge industry people need accountability you know you i a lot of us have bought courses and books and, and just maybe never read them or took taken the courses because maybe we didn't have someone holding us accountable. So use this to your advantage and use the script to say, you know, every time I have 
I face a decision, I'm going to embrace failure. I'm going to focus on, I focus on what I will gain. This could be a new script. In, in the woman's school, we use scripts as just mental dialogues that replace old beliefs and old ways of thinking with newer, more empowering ones. So when you use a new script, instead of, instead of saying, I can never make a decision. I'm so bad at this. I'm afraid. You switch that, you replace that with a new belief. And that starts wiring at a neurological level, a new way of thinking that is more empowering, more productive. So say I'm, you know, I, I, I'm courageous and I make decisions quickly. I believe in myself and I embrace the unknown. You know, whatever word or phrase or script helps you, you choose that. And that person who's going to help you can remind you of it. You can have it in somewhere in your office, your home and use it. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? Um, I know we have 10 minutes. Would you like me to go over this um, decision-making sheet? And once we go over it, you can always let me know, email me if you want me to send this to you uh, or go over it with you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. I usually do the Zoom calls to kind of go over these. And so it's a three-step decision-making plan that has been really helpful for me. Usually what I do with the masterclass that we teach is people go through it once and then what we want you to do is kind of memorize it and just kind of be able to do it quickly in your head, right? Because we're never going, we're not always going to have this form where we have to make a decision, right? We want to just kind of learn it and then use it. So step one is basically saying, you know, what's the problem? What's going on? You know, what, what's the problem? Do I need more money? Do I need to move? Do I need to, I want to go up to, to Paris. <laughs> I want to go to Egypt. Do I need to figure something for my family? Whatever it is, you first have to clarify the problem. Who is involved? Who has triggered this? What is the problem? Why is it a problem to solve? And problem, I think it's a word that we have a really negative connotation attached to, but a problem is just a situation, right? What, what's the situation? Who's causing it? What triggered it? Usually we would think negative about the word problem. So it could be something simple too. How? How did this become a problem, a situation, a thing that we need to focus on and resolve? Uh, once you clarify that, you know, okay, this is what's happening. Take inventory. And step two is, you know, you decide on a solution. And so a way to decide on the solution is first identify the roadblocks. So what are my roadblocks to solving this problem? I want to go to Egypt. I want to go to Switzerland. I want to go to Japan. What are my roadblocks? Well, I need some money. I need to buy the tickets. I need to get my, book my, you know, get my days off at work. For me, sometimes it's, I have to tell my mom to watch the kids. I have to arrange, you know, work and, and, and all that. So you look at the roadblocks, you lay them down on paper. It's so easy to do this on paper instead of just overthinking, right? But we, we don't do that because we never, no one taught us how to do that. And then think about what are the very, what are variable solutions? What are some solutions that I could go after that maybe are not obvious, obvious to me? Help, who can help me? Most of the time we wanna solve everything ourselves and we just get boggled up, we ruminate over and over and we never do the thing. Um, ask for help, let people help you. Skills, and also be humble to ask for help. I know a lot of people who, they just don't ask for help because they feel like they have too much pride. Let's be humble and just ask for help. Skill, what skill do I need to learn? A lot of times, the a lot, I work with a lot of moms and a lot of the biggest problems they have, the biggest problem they have is time management a lot of the time. And, and it's just like, I can't choose what to do if I should be with the kids or work at this certain time. And I always tell them, let's make a decision on what your schedule is going to look like in the week. Let's work on your morning routine, what habits you're going to accomplish and and follow through with in the morning and at night. And that just saves them so much time and they start feeling better right away because they have made a decision in advance. And then they say, well, a routine, developing routine, a routine is a skill. Time management is a skill. So if, if that's the skill you need, it'll help you and it will help you get to the decision, then you can use that. Or maybe sales. Sales can be a skill you need to make more money. Uh, marketing or something within your work communication skills. That's another one. So you you choose the skill that you want to learn. So this this is um, very helpful um, worksheet that you can use. 
and uh, you can let me know if you want it and uh, I will share it gladly with you. Let me know if this is helping you. Let me know if you have any questions. I think that for me, this has been a game changer and I see it every day with the students that we have. So remember, you are not stuck. You're only a skill away from the next level, from peace, for, from harmony. And decision-making is one skill that you can develop over time. No one is born a good or bad decision maker. No one is born a bad or, or good uh, communicator. We are what we are and we can become what we choose to become, right? If we make that decision. Uh, so 35,000 decisions are made per day that shape your lifetime when, no, when you have no training. But when you are trained, this is what we're doing here. You avoid, you know, accidents. You avoid bad choices. And you can also pass this down to the next generation, which is my biggest, um, I think, uh, sense of fulfillment is when I work with moms or dads and I see them training their kids in these new skills they're learning. For me, that that's just so beautiful. And I also pass it down to my children. And the example we give is just so powerful. So all of these are choices you can make. Um, and decision-making is just really one huge foundational skill that will help you tremendously. So I will want to open the floor now for questions. For any of you who have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I'm going to leave here my, my information one more time so that you can contact me if you want to. And uh, does anyone have any questions, any, any roadblocks? Um, that you're facing right now when it comes to decision making that maybe I didn't cover or that you want to just talk about. Let's see. Let me know. And if you want to turn your camera on, if you're in a position to do that, it's awesome. Take advantage of this, this group coaching time. I'm going to share with you two links. If you feel like you want more help or you want the, the worksheet, just share your email here and I'll contact you. I'll send it to you. Uh, I see question. What happens when you set too many goals and then you don't accomplish them? Um, I would. What happens is, you know, um, you start wiring that sense of frustration. You start feeling like, you know, it, it's not worth it to set a goal and not accomplish. The other thing that happens when you set too many goals at the same time is that perhaps you don't have the mindset to really believe it's possible and the skills are lacking. So maybe your goal is, is a legitimate goal. Maybe the time you're dedicating to it is not there. Maybe you don't have the habits to back it up. And so all of these things are skills you can learn, right? And I always recommend set two goals max in one area or two areas max because it takes your brain about 30 to 60 days to wire a new habit and or a new way of thinking and so if you're setting too many goals at the same time you might get overwhelmed and frustrated and i always also recommend i have a tool that helps you set a goal and come up with like five actions that you can take on a weekly basis or a monthly basis or a daily basis that will help you get closer to your goal and when you narrow down the actions narrow down the the, the goals and you make it more specific is easier to achieve. So I would always say just set smaller goals. Like I won't say that you want to limit yourself, right? You have a big dream. A dream is different than a goal. The goal needs to be at, um, something you can measure. Just choose a few. Don't overwhelm yourself. And just choose what you're going to do every day and every week to get closer to it. A lot of times we just make a goal and we just like, oh, I'll work on it tomorrow. If it's not in your calendar, it's not going to happen, right? So Put it in your calendar. Say the Saturday mornings, I'm going to work in, in, in whatever I need to do to achieve this goal. Every morning at 9 a.m., I'm going to wake up and exercise. I'm going to wake up and study. And if you're not making it happen every day, it's because you basically just have to develop some discipline. And it takes, you know, you can do that over time. But what will sustain your discipline is something that I love working on uh, in my free calls, which you can book one anytime, is your dream. A lot of times we set goals, but the goals are not aligned with our dream. And at the end of the day, our dreams are the gasoline. They're the fuel to the motive. When the motivation is gone and the discipline has to take it, uh, kick in, the dream fuels the discipline. So you want to attach your goals always to a dream, to something fun, exciting, that really gets you moving. Uh, and that's what I've seen that works best for my students and for me as well. So that was a long answer to a short question, but 
I hope that really helps. So narrow down your goals, connect them to a dream and develop discipline and find somebody to hold you accountable. Um, really. If you have a coach, if you have a group of, of friends that will hold you accountable, that will remind you you're in a community of girls like Bloom. Um, we see that a lot in the women's school as well. That will help you stick with it. Okay. Um, can you define making a quick decision? So a quick decision, I think, varies depending on um the type of decision, right? Like not all not not all decisions should be made <laughs> quickly. Uh, so I would say you want to gauge based on the severity of the decision or how serious it is, how much time you want to give yourself. One skill that you can learn is just give yourself a deadline, you know, talk to your, whoever's involved in the decision and say, you know, by this date, I want to have made a decision. Um, and when I say quick decisions is, you know, you go through the process of, okay, what are my options? What will I gain? What are possible solutions? Who can help me? It's just like not wasting too much time overthinking when I say quick it's just saying like try to lay down your options lay down the plan on paper lay it out I'm sorry lay it out on a paper pen and, pa and paper talk about it and give yourself a deadline and just make a decision without overthinking overthinking because when we overthink too much time goes by and we miss opportunities so quick could mean many things but I would say it's just depending on the decision just not staying in, in thinking too much and just moving on to action if that makes sense uh colleen um okay i'm gonna share here the quiz um that i have that you can take and then i'm gonna share if you if you ladies want that worksheet or anything that i shared today just let me know and just share send me your email and i'll send it to you and then we also have a free course that you can take with the women's school i like giving away things i just love you know, sharing. And so if you feel like you want to learn more about all of this, we have a free course that we teach. Um, and it's completely free for a whole month. You can just watch it at your own time. If you want to do it self-study, you can. If you want to have a coach walk you through it for free for a whole month, you will have that accountability. You will have that community. You'll have the course and that commitment. And it will go over, you know, self-love, standards, designing your life, figuring out how to make create goals that we actually stick with. All of this is in that free course. It's called How to Be a Woman in, in Today's World. And I'll share that. Um, I just shared that link there for you as well. So that's just my gift to you for being here. And I'm grateful that uh, we were able to just, you know, get to know each other. And then if you feel like you want to talk to me a little more and you need help, I have a free call that's completely complimentary. Um, zero commitments just me helping you out meet with nia is the link and you can always book something with me um and we just talk and we just go over this if you if you have more questions mm -hmm.